Number 47. Give more of yourself and ask less in return. When serving others becomes a priority, you will start asking the universe on a daily basis, how may I serve? It's a wonderful mantra. How may I serve? Number 48. If your first inclination is to have a judgmental thought about the physical appearances of someone else, notice what you are doing and redirect your thought to consider the fullness of God within that person. Number 49. Entertain the thought that you remove habits from your life by coaxing them downstairs one step at a time. Try to catch individual toxic thoughts in the moment they are occurring, one moment at a time, one day at a time, and you will be able to achieve the transition from toxicity to purity in your life. Number 50. Develop the sense that anything that is destructive to one human being is destructive to all. Know that the essence or life force that flows through you flows through everyone. That awareness will give you a loving energy that will help to bring all of us together. Number 51. Get a clear picture in your mind of something that you would like to see happen in your life. A job or an opportunity or a new love or quitting an addictive behavior or whatever. And keep your inner focus on this picture and don't allow anyone else to smear it and extend love outwardly with this picture in mind. The results will be worth your effort. You will manifest what you picture in your mind. Or, as it says in Proverbs, as you think, so shall you be. Number 52. Be aware of your thoughts and remind yourself that the simple act of thinking is evidence that there is an invisible energy that flows through you at all times. Every thought that you have, even though you can't see it and can't get a hold of it and has no boundaries and no form, it's still there, it's still real, it's still divine. And that's who you are, even though it's in another dimension other than your form. And when you practice living there, you are transforming, that is, going beyond the form, the form that is your body, the form that is your physical world. Number 53. Have conversations with God in private and important moments. During these conversations, instead of asking for special favors, affirm your willingness to use all of your inner strength to create solutions. Number 54. Develop your inner faith. The kind of faith I'm describing here does not need a religious service or a holy book. It comes from having the direct inner experience of God as a part of your higher self. Number 55. Let go of any repetitious inner dialogue about the horrors and tragedies of the world. Know that everything that happens is perfect, even the parts that you dislike. All of your opinions about how things should take place are nothing more than opinions that you have of how God should be orchestrating this play. There is woe in the world. There are problems in the world. William Blake said it so beautifully as you think about this affirmation for today in his poem. He said, man was made for joy and woe, and when this we rightly know, through the world we safely go. Joy and woe are woven fine, a clothing for the soul divine. Keep that in mind and get rid of all these ideas that all of the woes shouldn't be happening. It's all in order, and it's all to teach us some grand and heroic lesson. Number 56. Consider the possibility of totally eradicating your personal history from your consciousness and simply living completely in the present moment. You will find a new freedom as you realize that you aren't relying on the way things used to be to define your life today. Get rid of all of the labels that you placed on yourself about all of the things that you are and just erase your past and try to go out into this day with no past at all, just now. Number 57. Slow yourself down with moments of contemplative silence. That is, do nothing. In these moments, appreciate your body and all of your physical universe. Notice the inner waves of pleasure that you experience as you go to silence. Number 58. Know that you are a soul with a body rather than a body with a soul. 
remember that your soul cannot be measured or observed with the tools that we use to view the material world. That's a different world in there, that invisible divine world. And that's the world you want to connect to to transform your life. You are a soul with a body rather than a body with a soul. Number 59. Release the idea that a failed relationship makes you a failure. There are no failed relationships. Every person who enters and exits your life does so in a mutual sharing of life's divine lessons. All of us have people who come into our life for a short time and some have longer roles to play. There's no failure in there. It's all in divine order. We have who we have in our life in order to help us to create the world that we showed up here to fulfill our heroic mission. Number 60. Know that you are an eternal and purposeful being. Be secure and serene with no need for compliments or reassurances that you are, in one way or another, more special or distinct from others. We are all children of God, no favorites, no outcasts, all one. This is a Yuna verse, Yuna, one, verse, song. We're all one. We don't need to think of ourselves as special because the moment we do, we make someone else not special. And all of us, if we're all special, we don't need a word like special to define us. Special is the work of the ego. You don't need your ego here. You're working at your higher self, which says you are a creation, an extension of God. Number 61. Make love the focus of your life. When this is the case, you will have no expectations about how others should respond to your acts of love. Your higher self invites you to serve and give without any anticipation of reward. Number 62. In the words of Thoreau, simplify, simplify, simplify your life. As you do so, you will discover that many items that you previously chased after, including money, will ironically begin to show up in your life without your pursuing them. This is one of the great ironies of life. Less is more, and more is less. Number 63. Take full responsibility for all of the events in your life. When you blame something outside of yourself for the circumstances you're experiencing, you give control of your life to that outer phenomenon. When you release blame and go within, you will always find what you need. Number 64. Trust your intuition. Quietly affirm that you will define your own reality from now on and that your definition will be based on your own inner wisdom. I always think of uh, your intuition like this. If prayer is you talking to God, then your intuition is God talking to you. Trust it and you won't go wrong. Number 65. Stop paying so much attention to the superficial pursuits of your life. Learn to tune within and know higher levels of awareness. You need to become acquainted with this part of yourself and believe in the energy of the loving presence that is always a part of you. Number 66. Release the false idea that you need to prove to anyone that you have acquired the necessary credentials to be considered a success. Success is not measured by externals. It comes from within. Success is an inside job. You don't have to have it validated by anything or anyone outside of yourself. Number 67. Remind yourself that every negative thought that you have about another is something you are thinking about yourself. Replace these negative thoughts with positive ones and your self-esteem and your self-worth will grow accordingly. Number 68. Be aware of the fact that everyone who comes into your life, in any capacity, is valuable. The petty tyrants are just as divine as those who provide you with encouragement and support. Those whom we judge to be unfortunate or evil can teach us our greatest lessons. Petty tyrants may appear to us as petty and tyrannical, but they may be divine masters just disguised as petty tyrants to teach you something that you didn't know you had to learn. Number 69. Know that you don't really have to do your best at everything you do. 
Your best leaves no room for improvement. You are better off to simply do and enjoy and be willing to learn rather than putting this standard of having to do your best at everything that you do today or any day. Just do. Number 70. Try on the concept that beliefs restrict you while knowings empower you. A belief is merely a mental note attached to your lapel by your mommy. A knowing is etched into the cells of your being and therefore lives within you with an absence of doubt. Everything that you believe was handed to you by someone outside of you and therefore it has doubt attached to it. Everything that you know comes from within. So think of beliefs as something that restrict you while knowings empower you. Number 71. Release your fear of disapproval. You do not need it. You are a divine creation of God. When you know that you are on a spiritual mission, you become independent of the good opinion of others. Get on with your purpose. Number 72. Appreciate the beauty around you. A soaring bird, a budding tree, a mother and her nursing infant, an elderly couple holding hands. Allow love to circulate from you to them and feel it being returned. The more you practice receiving love from your surroundings, the more energized you will become. Number 73. If you doubt your ability to know God, then know that if you are alive, you have the life force of God within you. It's as simple as that. Your aliveness confirms the existence of the highest awareness within you. God is within you. God is alive. God is the divine energy that flows through all things and creates all. Number 74. Drop the notion that you are what you do. Remember this exercise in logic. If you are what you do, then when you don't, you aren't. Number 75. When you find yourself troubled by anything, say out loud, I am more than what bothers me. Just this simple statement affirming yourself as something more than a receptacle for troubles will keep you from allowing these troubles to run rampant in your daily life. I am more than what bothers me. I am more than what troubles me. I am the noticer of all of those things, not that which I am noticing. Number 76. Remember that you are here on earth for one purpose to love and to be loved. When you concentrate on this thought, everything in life seems to flow more easily. Number 77. Practice listening to others today while keeping the focus off of yourself. During conversations, concentrate on what the other person is saying and what they are feeling. Then respond with a sentence that begins with you instead of I. You seem to be having a tough day today rather than, I want to tell you about myself. Number 78. Remind yourself every day that the highest worship of God is service to mankind and that it is through those acts that your spiritual quest will be realized. You do not need to convince others that you are divine. Do it indeed. Your inner awakening of joy and bliss will be reward enough. Number 79. Try not to compare yourself to others as a measure of your performance or feelings of success. If you do, you will have brought into the erroneous idea that God plays favorites and that you will in some way be better when you are ahead of someone else. There are no favorites. There are no betters. We are all one. We are all equal in the eyes of God. So comparing yourself to others is an exercise in futility and a belief somehow that God doesn't really know what she is doing. Number 80. Examine everything that offends you and see if you can get your ego out of the picture. When you are offended, you are actually thinking, this is awful, how could God allow it? Release your ego, then act upon that which you are for. Then there will be no need to fight. Everything that you are for empowers you, but everything that you're against weakens you. Whenever you have to fight something, you're weaker for the effort. Number 81. Resist the need to be boastful about yourself. 
Strive to be interested rather than interesting. Become the listener, the one who cares about the accomplishments and activities of others, and you will not need to distort your personal storyline at all. Number 82. Practice generosity. People who give willingly of their possessions and their money are not doing it because they have it to give. They are coming from a special heart space that is attracted to serving and sharing. We can all give something in the service of others and in the service of our higher selves as well. Number 83. Know that love is the least threatening experience there is. Love asks nothing and demands nothing. It calls for giving, sharing, and vulnerability with God as your inner guide communicating infinite love. Number 84. Avoid dictating to those who are smaller, younger, or less educated. We are all at different stages on the spiritual path, but none of us is better than anyone else. We're just different. Number 85. Allow your higher self to guide you when you have problems. Create a sentence that you repeat silently, such as, Please decide this for me. I leave it in your hands. This may seem like a cop-out, but I have found this technique helpful in many problem areas of my life. Turning to God is like turning to the higher part of yourself and asking for the guidance to make the right decision in this moment. Number 86. Remind yourself that God created you in perfect love that is changeless and eternal. Your body is changing, as is your mind. So you are not that body or that mind. You were created as a spirit that is pure love. That is where you want to keep your attention focused, on the spirit that is pure love. Number 86. Remind yourself that God created you in perfect love that is changeless and eternal. Your body is changing, as is your mind. So you are not that body or that mind. You were created as a spirit that is pure love. That is where you want to keep your attention focused, on the spirit that is pure love. Number 87. Free yourself from addictions, that is, addictions to substances such as alcohol, drugs, sugar, caffeine, or more abstract concepts such as approval and danger and sexual conquest. All of this is just your ego at work. When you know that you have the presence of God within you, you will no longer be addicted to externals. Number 88. Begin keeping track of the judgmental thoughts that you allow in your thoughts each and every day. Increasing your awareness of this judging habit will help you consult your loving presence as these judgmental attitudes begin to surface. Number 89. Rather than continually making an issue of things with your immediate family and friends, try letting go of your ego investment in favor of a more peaceful point of view. You only need a few seconds to pause and know how much better peace feels. Allow them to be who they are and let go of your need to be offended by all that they are or are not. That's just your ego at work. Unconditional love means just that. You love them without any conditions. Number 90. Instead of cursing the past, bless it and forgive yourself entirely. When you know that all of those experiences were a part of the divine design of your life, you can afford to forgive. Number 91. Try not to judge God. Know that hurricanes, tornadoes, crime and poverty are as much a part of the divine plan as our sunny days, calm seas and compassion and prosperity. Your desire to improve conditions is also a part of the plan. So concentrate on that, that is, on improving things that you find distasteful, rather than why certain conditions seem to be wrong, which is just your ego at work telling yourself that it knows what should and shouldn't be. It's all in divine order, including your right to fix it. Number 92. Develop the ability to witness your thoughts by stepping back and watching them enter and exit your mind. Just observing the flow of thoughts will slow the mind down to the still point where you can experience God. Become the witness. Cultivate the observer within you rather than on all that is being observed. 
Number 93. When you feel an inclination to blame someone else for your circumstances, take an instant to say a prayer of thanks for the lesson. The lesson is to become aware that you are the one experiencing the feeling. Number 94. Remember that whatever you want to know or accomplish in your life is possible if you are truly ready to trust in your divine powers to manifest it. You will find that the appropriate teachers will appear for you and that you will be guided in the right direction. Number 95. Remember that love is the best antidote to fear and doubt. Therefore, when you experience a moment of fear or doubt, give yourself a portion of mental love and remind yourself that you are a holy creation. Number 96. Know that objects cannot give you freedom. They only demand more companions and further enslave you. The idea of purchasing freedom in any way is a false idea, and this false idea tells you to expect freedom when you achieve a certain level of financial accumulation. These are what we call counterfeit freedoms. Authentic freedom is the freedom that comes from within, from going to the higher self and allowing that to be the ruling force in your life. Number 97. Free yourself of prejudice. Prejudice thinking comes from treating your mind like a rental space for the thoughts and beliefs of others. The antidote for toxic prejudging thoughts is to suspend your ego and listen to your higher self. You will begin knowing that no one on this planet is superior or special in the eyes of God, just as no one is non-special. Number 98. Be aware that nothing will bring about an inner feeling of turmoil faster than allowing yourself to be seduced into fighting or arguing. You always have a choice to argue or not to argue, to confront or not to confront. Choose the path which leads to peace. Number 99. Look into a mirror and say out loud, I love you, I value you, I know that there is much more to you than what I see staring back at me. You will find yourself going beyond the physical you and remove many of your intrusive thoughts about defending yourself and attempting to prove your worth. You are not that face looking back in you in the mirror. You are that which is observing the face. And that doesn't show up in any mirror or on any physical measuring device that we have on this planet. Number 100. Demonstrate tolerance and love by ignoring what may have transpired in the past. Avoid the inclination to make someone else wrong by pointing out the fallacies of their point of view with examples from their past. Let go of the desire to win and cultivate the desire to communicate. Number 101. Know that you are not your name, your occupation, or your social security number. You are eternally light and divine, regardless of what you have done or have failed to do, regardless of what family you have lived in or what you may have been labeled. In the God intelligence, you are holy and you have a purpose for being here. Stay with that purpose. Know that there are no accidents, and the energy that moves the planet, that moves every thought across your mind, is the same energy that moves the star across the sky. You are a divine being. This concludes 101 ways that you can take a look at transforming your life each and every day of your life. 101 thoughts that you can use and when you begin to practice these on a daily basis without telling anyone else about it, without having to write them down, without taking a test, when you just know that each day you are working on transforming, going beyond form, you will understand the magic of knowing that you are not a human being having a spiritual experience, but indeed that it's the other way around. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And these 101 techniques are just ways to help you to make that human experience more blissful. God bless you.